Hey everyone, it's Matt from The Pen Habit. Welcome to another Ink Spot review. Um, apologies if I sound a little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <coughs> Sick, because I am. I uh, just spent a week in my, uh, my departed grandmother's house. She passed away a few months ago and we've been cleaning out her house and uh, she was something of a hoarder and uh, I have a terrible allergy to mold and mildew. So it has been a little bit rough on the uh, whole respiratory system. So in any case, uh, today's Ink Spot review, we're going to be taking a look at a brand I'm not, I don't have a lot of experience with, KWZ. Now, KWZ is a Polish-made ink, um, and to the best of my knowledge, it is only available in the U.S. from Van Ness Pens. Uh, so I believe their website is vanness1938.com. Uh, I picked this up from uh, Van Ness Pens when I was at the DC show in 2015 in August. Um, and this is, KWZ's got a, an interesting line of inks, but what makes their some of their inks really interesting is they've got a really wide selection of Iron Gall inks. Now, Iron Gall inks, for those who aren't familiar, are um, very slightly acidic uh, inks that have the intended property of a couple of properties of being both water resistant and they darken over time. So uh, you'll really see it in this ink. It goes on one color and darkens to another color uh, over time, which is actually kind of cool, I think. Um, Iron Gall inks can be a little iffy um, because they require a little bit more maintenance. You have to make sure you're cleaning out your pens more often and getting them all the way uh, getting all that ink out. You don't want to leave iron gall ink sitting in your pens for a really long time, especially in vintage pens. Although, to be fair, a lot of inks back in the day were iron gall inks. Uh, so vintage pens might be a little bit more able to handle it than some of the modern pens. Now, modern iron gall inks tend to not have all of the problems that vintage iron gall inks did. Um, and I've been using this KWZ Iron Gall Turquoise, almost nonstop since I got it back in August. I haven't had a problem, number one. I put it in a bunch of different pens. I really, really like this ink. It's a very cool ink. So um, let's go ahead. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write with a few different pens just to show you how it goes down. Then I'll go over the more in-depth parts of the review where I, I go through some of the water resistance and dry times and stuff like that and wrap up from there. So here we go. All right, hopefully you'll be able to see this because one of the things that's interesting, as I mentioned about this ink, is the color change. So watch, if you can, while the color change is happening. So this is a fine nib. And this is a Lamy, excuse me, it is a Lamy knockoff. It's a Jinhao 599. Now, the ink goes on as kind of this um, very interesting... It reminds me a lot of Iroshizuku Kujaku as it goes down on the page. It dries to a much darker uh, color over time, almost a blue-black. So you get a little bit of that turquoisey, greeny undertone when you put it down, but as it dries, it darkens pretty significantly. Uh, let's see, then we go to a medium. And you can see the difference between the fine and the medium already just from that amount of dry time. And this one is a Lamy. And this one is a Vista. Then we have a broad, and this broad is fairly wet. So this is the Lamy All Star. I'll do a 1.5 millimeter nib. Grab a flex nib next. This is the pilot. Oh, can't spell custom heritage. 912. And then just to wrap it off with a really, really wide nib, 
we have a three point eight millimeter. I'm not at the right angle to write this properly, so you'll have to forgive some of my sloppiness here. And we'll just do it on the side. Parallels. Okay. So, um, you can see here, this ink does have a fair bit of shading, but the the darkness as it as it darkens and and if i'm just going to leave it here maybe i'll speed this section up a little bit so you can just kind of watch this darken here okay hopefully the camera was able to pick that up but um it it darkens quite a bit from the moment you put the ink down to the moment you to the moment it dries and this isn't even all the way dry yet but if I go and put new ink underneath it, hopefully you'll be able to see the difference in the, the color there between that turquoisey color and now what's moved down into a, a blue-black almost. Um, and the, the interesting thing about this ink is that it continues to darken over time. So, you know, this is, you can see this here, this is the, um, the blue-black of, I did this a couple months ago, so you can see it gets a lot darker over time as the iron gall ink continues to oxidize. So that's an interesting thing. Also interesting, as I mentioned before, water resistance. I know that's interesting to a lot of people. So let's go ahead and do, let me walk you through the more in-depth tests that I did on the different paper types so I can show you how the ink performs in those cases. Okay, so this is Ro a Rhodia dot pad. Um, and I did this last night, so you can see already it's darkened up quite a bit. Um, if, and I'm going to show you this here, so you can see this is what I just did recently. Same pen between those two. Um, I did that last night, I did that this morning. So it goes into this nice blue-black. What's really interesting about this super dark blue-black, though, is in, you, can, you may be able to tell it here. You'll, you'll probably be able to see a little better in the photos. So head over to penhabit.com to check out these photos. There's shading, but it's more like an ombre effect. It's, or ombre, I don't know how it's pronounced, um, but it's, it, it's gradual shading instead of that real binary shading that you see with a lot of other inks, where it just goes from the lighter to the darker in that nice, smooth transition. Rich, dark color, um, not really much sheen to speak of here. Um, you can see this was more pronounced last night when I did it, but it's as it darkens, it becomes less pronounced, the, the multiple pass test. Neat thing about this is a fairly low dry time for Rhodia paper. It's only 20 seconds. Normally 25 to 30 is pretty common. So if you've got a finer nib, and this is a medium, you'll see a, uh, a, a slightly lower dry time. Here are those same pens written with, again, the flex nib was particularly wet that time. Um, and then you can see the pilot parallels here. Now, when it comes to water, nothing, uh, it took a little of the color off, but left a very solid line behind. Rubbing also took a little off. The bleach got rid of most of it, which is pretty common. But even ammonia didn't do much here. So this is a pretty resistant ink. It's not 100% bulletproof, but it's pretty, pretty resistant. So as long as you're not working with bleach, chances are this will survive uh, a little bit of impact with water. I, I've started using this ink a lot for addressing envelopes specifically for that reason. Um, so you can see the turquoise to blue black um, and then uh, I'll just do another little swatch here so you can see the comparison after a full day of, of oxi oxidation. So that's the difference in color right there. It's kind of a fun thing. Uh, so if you like writing with something that's a little bit more vibrant, but don't necessarily want it to remain vibrant forever, like on business documents or something, this might be a good option. Uh, no bleed at all on this paper, except for I had a little tiny bit of bleed right there where I was using the super, super wet nibs. I don't really count that when I'm talking bleed. I love this color. I even like the really dark blue color here, the blue-black color. Uh, got a lot of depth to it, and I love that kind of gradual shading. 
no feathering. It's surprisingly well lubricated. I find a lot of iron gall inks tend to be a bit dry feeling and unlubricated feeling. I didn't get that with this KWZ ink. It seems to flow very nicely. Good saturation, pretty good shading, um, but nothing spectacular. No sheen to speak of, and uh, and a decent. It's it's pretty good on show through, especially on the lower uh, width nibs. On some of the wider nibs, it does show through a little bit more, as you would expect. Okay, so that's Erodia Dot Pad 80 GSM. Here is some Tomoe River, and this is a 52 GSM. So, and I'm going to put them side by side. This is a cream colored paper versus a white paper. So it's a little less saturated here on the, the Tomoe River. Uh, I, I tend to like it a bit more on the Rhodia than on the Tomoe River, but you still get that really nice uh, ombre shading in here. Um, unfortunately, the dry times on Tomoe River were almost double those of, uh, of Rhodia. Now, I will say at 20 seconds, there's still a bit of smudging, but from 25 on, it was just a tiny, tiny little bit of smudging. Um, it wasn't until 40 seconds that it was completely dry, but at about 20 seconds, I would feel comfortable turning the page, I think, uh, without too much difficulty there. Same pens over here on the left. Really neat shading. I find the shades a little bit better on Tomoe River. Um, there is a tiny, tiny bit of sheen on the Tomoe River. It's really hard to see, though. It's... Let me see if I can pick it up here. I don't think I'll be able to on this particular camera. You can see it right here, though. It's, uh, there's a, it's kind of like a deep red, blackish sheen there. And then the, here's another three pass kind of to show you the shading over time. So on this paper, there's a little more bleed than there was on the other one, which is kind of to be expected knowing it's 52 GSM. It's not still not bad. It's even on the, the parallels of the flex. There's a little bit, but it's not bad. So pretty good on bleed. I like the color a lot. Feathering, no feathering, quite lubricated still, good saturation, but perhaps a little less saturation. I gave this a nine on the Rhodia, eight on the Tomoe River. A little bit better shading on the Tomoe River, a tiny bit of sheen, and with this being thinner paper, the, the show through is not so great. And then just a very quick test on cheap copy paper. And for the most part, this ink did quite uh, admirably on, this is 75 GSM Staples copy paper. Uh, so we get a little bit of feathering on the pooling here and just a tiny, tiny bit around the really wide. But, uh, you know, not much feathering to speak of here, even on the 1.5 millimeter and pretty good dry times. Um, I find that iron gall inks are generally good inks to use on cheap paper. They seem to do pretty well. So starting with the broad, we do get some bleed through, but it's not terrible. But on the fine and medium, there's really no bleed through to speak of at all. Okay, now let me do just show you a few comparables here, just so you have kind of a, a, a sample of where this ends up after it dries. And this is, like I said, a couple months worth of, of dry time here. So that's Ackermann number five, Shocking Blue. This is a vintage Schaefer Scrip number 232, which is a permanent blue-black. Um, it's, I don't know if you can see it in the video there. Yeah, it's behind this, it's this gigantic bottle that's from the 50s, I think. Uh, so that's, that's where that ink comes from. This is Sailor Gentle Blue Black. We've got Private Reserve Midnight Blue, so quite a bit brighter there. Pilot Iroshizuku Tsukiyo. So this has a little bit of that green undertone, but it's not anywhere near as dark. It doesn't darken up over time. This is Pilot Iroshizuku Shinkai. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Very similar in shade there. Pelican Edelstein Tanzanite. This is probably one of the closest in colors to where it ends up. This is Noodler's Bad Belted Kingfisher. Mont Blanc Midnight Blue. And this is the older Iron Gall formula. So it goes on. This is more gray, but this also will darken over time. Uh, we've got Caveco Midnight Blue. Diamine Twilight. Diamine Eclipse, which has a bit more of a purple tinge to it. Diamine Denim. And Karan Dosh 
Colors of the Earth, Blue Night. So there really aren't a lot of other inks out there that have that same color family as the KWZ. It's, it's, I mean, there, there's some that are close, Pelican, Edelstein, Tanzanite being the closest, but none of them go on as light or as with that greenish undertone of the turquoise and then turn to such a deep blue-black with such neat shading. So overall, I've been really, really impressed with this ink. I think it's, it's affordable, it's unusual. Uh, I love the water-resistant property of it. It's a great address, envelope addressing ink. It's great if you've got to use uh, poor quality paper, especially if you've got a fine or a medium nib. I think this is an ink that, that people will like a lot. You'll just want to make sure that you flush the pen every now and again and uh, make sure you don't leave it sitting in there for several months at a time because it is a little on the acidic side. And oh, very quickly, don't want to forget this, the, uh, the little chromatography strip here. So you can see there's kind of a, a double band, so a little bit of gray and then it, uh, a light turquoisey color, another little spatch of gray here, spatch, patch of gray more of the deeper turquoise then we move into a dark uh kind of a cerulean blue up to a dark blue at the edge so and this was done last night uh, as well so all right well i think that's going to do it for this ink spot review of kwz iron gall turquoise quick reminder uh right now to the best of my knowledge the only place in the u.s that carries kwz ink is van ness pens i don't know if they're available i haven't seen it available from a lot of other locations so be on the lookout if you happen to know other places where you can find kwz please leave them in the uh, comments on youtube or at penhabit.com i would encourage you to go over to penhabit.com and check out the photos that go along with this video my overhead camera doesn't give me a lot of fine grain control when it comes to color correction so i try to take some better photos and get really really tight on the color correction as best i could there um, and i took the photos about two hours after i did the tests because i didn't want to see such a huge i didn't want it to darken all the way um, so you'll be able to see what it looks like a couple of hours after you've written with it. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you here next time on The Pen Habit. Bye. I need to brush my teeth.